weekend we got our latest Hall of Fame class inducted into Cooperstown, and there were some notable names that certainly were not honored as part of the overall Hall of Fame, and clearly those people have not been inducted for multiple reasons. Now, I got my short list of five, yes, the five, the only five that you should pay attention to that are not inducted into the Hall of Fame, and it's a damn shame they're not. I think the number one going all the way back to his time playing with the big red machine, Pete Rose, should certainly be in the Hall of Fame. It's sort of laughable that we now see leagues associating themselves with daily fantasy in order to make money while still excluding the Hits King in Pete Rose from the Hall of Fame. We all know what he did. A lot of us don't care what he did. And at the end of the day, it's a damn shame he's not in the Hall of Fame. Make it happen, man. By the end of his life, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Now, number two on this list, and actually two through five, you're going to find all are associated with Quote the PED era. Yes, I'd like to take those quotations and stomp on them because it's an absolute joke. If Bud Flippin' Seelig gets into the Hall of Fame over the weekend, anyone that took a syringe and stuck it in their rear end deserves to get in the Hall of Fame as well. And a lot of these guys didn't do that. They used HGH, which is a whole nother argument. But we start with Barry Bonds. No, Barry Bonds was never suspended during his Major League Baseball career. Yes, his head might have exploded to the size of a hot air balloon, but at the end of the day, the dude is the home run king. And don't refer to him as anything but Hall of Fame. Yes, Barry Bond should be in. Next is a guy that captivated my heart in the late 90s with the home run chase with him and Sammy Sosa. His name's Mark McGuire. Now, his overall batting average is like 263 throughout his career. Doesn't mean that gets him into the Hall, but what he did during those few years and ultimately what he did as far as his overall home run numbers and his OPS, over 400, dude, that's awesome. That needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Mark McGuire, yes, get in the Hall of Fame. Next on the list is a guy that I loved watching pitch. Roger Clemens has the most Cy Youngs. Dude is absolutely a baller on the mound, and there's no reason when you say Roger Clemens that you shouldn't think Hall of Fame right after it. Yes, I understand everything that transpired, but once again, I could really care less. I watched it, I witnessed it, and don't insult my intelligent sports writers in Cooperstown by not putting Roger Clemens in the Hall of Fame. And finally, this guy shook his finger at Congress, which first of all was a joke. Why any politicians were gathering on Capitol Hill talk about PEDs and baseball is beyond me. But Rafael Palmero, yes, he lied. But again, does lying equal exclusion from the Hall of Fame? In what world should it? I don't think any world I want to live in. So put Rafael Palmero in. He is one of the best hitters to ever play the game. I loved his swing. I loved his game. I didn't like him sitting there lying to Congress, but he should have never had to go to Congress in the first place because it was an absolute joke. Rafi should be in the Hall of Fame. And finally, I'm going to throw one guy in an honorable mention that isn't a part of any era. Uh, I really don't know why Steve Garvey never got into the Hall of Fame from the Dodgers. Certainly a staple during his time out there playing for L.A. And really, his numbers probably should have been Hall of Fame worthy. He's one of those few guys that's not associated with the PED era or is not named Pete Rose that should be in the Hall of Fame that didn't get in. At the end of the day, we, we need to make changes. We need to get these guys in the Hall of Fame so we don't insult our intelligence and we get the best baseball players ever in the place they deserve. That is immortality right there in Cooperstown.